How do you know what your tire pressure is when you're towing your trailer down the road? Well, I've got a product that will tell you that and so much more that I'll share with you in this episode of Travels with Delaney. Welcome back, everyone. My name's Patrick, and if this is your first time here at Travels with Delaney, welcome. We're your channel all about RVing and living life to the fullest. If you'd like to follow along in our day-to-day -day lives, us living in our log cabin, and some of our weekend journeys in our 2020 Lance 1985, check out our all-new channel, TWD Life. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link for that down in the description for this video. Now, let's get right into this week's topic, and that is, do you know what your tire's pressure is when you're going down the road on your RV? And for most people like me, the answer is no. But the good news is there is a product that can help us with that. See, if you have a tire go out on your RV while going down the road, at a minimum, it's going to do several hundred dollars worth of damage. And worst case scenario is you, your family, or someone else could be seriously injured or killed so we want to prevent that from happening and luckily our friends over at tire minder have a product that will do just that it's going to help mitigate the risk with tires blowing out on your trailer or rv going down the road so let's go ahead and take a look at their product we're going to go on inside our trailer and we're going to unbox it Recently, Michael over at Tire Innovation reached out to me to see if I might be interested in giving one of their products, the Tire Minder i10, a tryout. And I said, absolutely, I have actually been looking at one of these for quite some time, but just had not made the purchase. Now, you may have already seen this product on other great YouTube channels like Happy Place Diaries and Endless RVing, so I know it's a great product. But when Michael reached out and said, hey, would you give it a try and let your subscribers know about it, I was more than happy to do that because based upon everybody's reviews, I already know this is a great product. So let's go ahead and dive into what you actually get if you decide to purchase a tire. Tireminder. Now, a tire minder is a tire pressure management system, or shortened TPMS, and this is their I-10-4. The 4 just means that it has four sensors because we have a dual axle trailer. The great news is they sell these in all different sizes depending on how many tires are on your trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome. And so it's almost like customized to what you have. So in our case, we have a dual axle, which means we needed four sensors. So and hence, we have the I-10-4. Now, the first thing I noticed when this arrived in the mail is the packaging. Like, Packaging to me says a lot about your product. And what I love about this is just how nicely this product looks in the package. It's well packaged and it looks really nice. So go ahead and open it up. And the first thing we find right on top is the actual monitor. So this monitor is what is going to go in our tow vehicle and it's going to let us know what our tires pressure are at all times. So the other nice thing I like about this is it's digital and it looks like it's gonna be really easy to read. This is a wireless system, which I really like. So I'm not gonna have to like run wires between my trailer and my tow vehicle. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull out the next box. And in this box, we have an instruction manual, uh, the warranty card, and this is amazing. How many products actually give you the batteries that you need to use a product? And Tire Minder goes even further. Not only do they give you the batteries for the tire sensors, but they give you an extra set. Now, that to me is pretty amazing. So not only do I have enough batteries for the sensors to get going, I have a backup set for when those wear out. Um, and then in here, let's try to pull one of these out. There are four sensors in my kit because that's what I need. And the sensors are just these little black and metal sensors that we're going to end up screwing on to the valve stems on our tires. And there's four of those. And then we have a little... Uh, looks like a little tool kit. Um, these have a locking feature, so we're going to be able to put uh, a nut on and then lock these in place so somebody can't steal them. That's nice. And there's one of my extra batteries that fell out. And let's see what else do we have here. Oh, looks like they also give us this nice sticker that we can put on our vehicle if we want. So that's that box. And then there's one more box here. Let's open it up. Oops, and I ripped it. Okay, 
So in this one, I'm gonna just kind of pull this stuff out. Number one, and you can see I have not opened this before. Um, we have a suction mount so that we can use this in our vehicle. We could mount it, let's say, to the windshield and that way we can keep it up. And so that's kind of nice that they give you a way to display it in your vehicle. We also have, looks like the charging cable. This is gonna be used to charge your monitor. What I've read uh, and heard online already is you don't have to have this plugged in all the time. You can actually charge it up and then not have the cable in the way if you don't want it. Um, but then when it's time to charge, uh, you can do that and you can see it's just a USB on one end. Next, we have the repeater. Now, the repeater is the one thing we're gonna have to install besides the, the sensors onto the tires. And what this does is basically, this is going to send a signal from your trailer or RV up to the monitor. Now, my understanding is they those sensors could probably send that signal on up, but if you have a really long vehicle or if you have lots of other electronic devices going, you can get interference. This is going to ensure that you don't have the interference and those signals are getting sent up front. Um, and the nice thing is it comes with alligator clips. So if you have batteries on the outside of your trailer, you can literally clip this right to the battery and then mount this right to the frame. They do recommend that you mount it with the antennas going down. Um, they also give you some zip ties, so you can just use that. You don't have to do any drilling or anything like that. Now, with our Lance, our batteries are actually located on an inside uh, storage area, so I'm gonna need to figure out a way to run this from the batteries down, or I may just tap into a 12 volt line that I can find somewhere on the frame of the trailer, but we'll deal with that later. Now, like I said, this monitor, um, and it can uh, give you not only the current pressure of your tires, and it's gonna give you each tire on the display, which is nice. So I'm gonna be able to monitor when we're going down the road what the trailer tires are doing. But in addition, you can set a baseline, meaning what do you want your tires to be at when they're at cold temperature? And then this is going to monitor not only the individual tire pressures, but it will be able to alert you to things like a slow leak, a rapid leak, or if your tires are getting too hot, um, or if the pressures are getting too high. So this is actually going to give us a lot of information that's gonna help us remain safe. And we're headed out west this summer, and we know when we get down into Arizona in mid to late June, it is going to be super hot. So to be able to have a peace of mind to know what the temperatures are running on our tires, that is going to be really important. So, and I love the fact that it's not only just monitoring the pressures, but it's gonna alert us if there is that slow leak. Cause with a slow leak, maybe I can just slow it down and get to the next uh, exit or rest stop and pull over and figure out what's going on. But it's also gonna alert me to one of those rapid um, releases of air. And in that case, that means it's much more serious, which means I better slow it down and get pulled off to the side of the road quickly. Now, I had this situation occur last year with my tow vehicle. I was just on my way to work and we have a built-in TPMS system on our uh, Toyota truck. And I immediately received a notification that I had a tire going flat. So I went to the next exit, I pulled off, I found the leak and sure enough, I could hear it. It was a nail in the tire. I was able to limp to the next exit where the Toyota dealership was. And they told me had I not have slowed down and not have been alerted, the tire was well on its way to actually blowing out. And again, could have caused serious damage to not only the vehicle, but also to myself and other drivers on the road. So that's why I think one of these is really important if you're towing an RV, a trailer, a fifth wheel, whatever, is so that you can have that same comfort and peace of mind from a safety standpoint with your RV that you might have on your personal vehicle. So let's go ahead now that we've unboxed it and let's install it. And I love the fact that right on the front of the box, they say 
This is a DIY project. This is not something you need to pay somebody to do. You can actually do it yourself. So the I've already looked over the instructions, and so I have a pretty good idea what I'm going to do. But I did want to mention this instruction manual because we review a lot of products. And I have to be honest, sometimes the one thing that I don't care for with some of these electronic products is, is the instructions. They really lack in detail. Um, and they just don't answer all my questions. I am really impressed with TireMinder because you can tell they have put a lot of thought and effort into making an instruction manual that gives you step-by-step -step instructions, answers lots of questions. It's just very thorough. So I feel really comfortable installing this myself, knowing that I have these instructions that are going to talk me right through it. So the instruction manual says the first thing I need to do is actually get this repeater installed. So. Real simple, I've got the alligator clips, and what I'm gonna do for the video purpose is, because my batteries are on the inside, you can see I've got one of my Battleborn lithium batteries right here, I'm gonna go ahead and just attach it here, run the cable down the side, and temporarily mount it in place. Eventually, I will go ahead and find a 12 volt place to tap into, and that way we don't have a cord going down. But just to get this video going, we're gonna go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna clip the negative to the negative, and I am going to clip the positive to the positive. And instantly you can see we have a green light, which means we have power. So then what I'll end up doing is just putting my battery back into place. I'll we'll lock that in. And I'm gonna carefully close this door. And we're just going to set it over here on the frame. Step number two is to go ahead and install the batteries into the transmitter. So all I have to do is unscrew the plastic black cap. I'm going to take one of the batteries that's included and there is a spot to slide it in. Now we wanna make sure that the positive or the flat side is facing up. And we're just gonna lock that right into place. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our cap back on carefully so we don't strip it out. And now I'm gonna do that for the other three real quick. And there we go, we have all of our batteries installed. Again, they actually sent me extra batteries, so when I do need to replace them, I already have them. So I'm just gonna set those aside for now. Now we're gonna to need to go outside and start installing these, we're also going to need to take our monitor with us because we're gonna now be not only installing these, but syncing it up so we can actually monitor our tire pressure. All right, now we're ready to complete this install. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the cap from the valve stem. And I'm just gonna lay that right there. And I'm going to grab one of the locking nuts and I'm going to start threading that on. And I want to get that at least a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to go all the way back. And then I'm going to grab one of my tire sensor monitors. Now, before I put my tire sensor monitor on, I need to go ahead and turn the monitor itself on. I'm just going to press that. And here we have it in what's known as monitoring mode. Hopefully you'll be able to see that okay. So what I need to do is hold the left and right buttons and that's going to put it into learn mode. And there's an L right here, tells me it's in learn mode. And I can actually then use these left and right arrows to place the blinking sensor on the tire where I want it installed. So we're actually on the passenger side of the vehicle. So I'm going to take this over. And now the one that kind of corresponds here on the screen, that way I'll know which one it is. Now what I have to do is go ahead and put this into place. Okay, and we're gonna give it 15 seconds and it's already sending a signal, 58 pounds of pressure. Now, as far as how to lock these in place so no one can steal them, what I just have to do now is I have to use the, wrench, the little wrench that was included. I'm gonna go ahead and get that snug tight and then you use this special wrench. And there we go. Now, 
we have it locked into place and hopefully no one will steal our sensors. So as far as these little valve caps, you can just hang on to those. You won't need those with this. So now what we need to do is we just need to go ahead and do the same thing for the other three tires on the trailer. And again, we're going to use our left right arrows to get them into the right position. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. And then as soon as I get that done, then we'll talk about a few other features with this. All right, so now I can go ahead and press the center button. I'm going to hold that, and it's going to allow me to toggle between things like PSI or barometric pressure, but I'm okay with PSI. I'm going to hit the center button one more time, and then it's going to ask me whether I want to be in Fahrenheit or Celsius for my temperature readings. I want Fahrenheit. And then it's going to bring me next to... Oops. No, wrong button we'll go back we want fahrenheit all right and then we're going to hit that center button a third time and now i'm back to a blinking tire what that does now is puts me where i can set that baseline pressure and i'm just going to use the left or right arrow so i want to set my tires at 65 psi because that's what goodyear says we should be running at if we're at a maximum load and our trailer typically is at a maximum load so i'm going to go ahead and hit that center button one more time and i'm going to just it's going to rotate me through each tire now if you have tires that you want to run at different pressures you can set them at different i'm just going to go ahead and set all four tires to 65 psi And then I push the center button one more time and we're back. So now all I have to do is just hold that center button in for five seconds and we're good to go. So now I've actually set my baseline and we're back into actually monitoring the pressure on our tires. Now what I can do if I want is I could use the suction cup and mount this somewhere in my truck. I actually have a place in a cubby where I think I'm gonna put it, but that's really up to you. Um, it's literally that simple to install the tire minder system. All right, we're all hooked up. I love this thing. So simple to install. Now, I did want to go over just a few things with you out of the manual. This is going to be monitoring your tire pressures, it says, every six seconds. So it's going to be up to date. Secondly, these are the things it's going to be looking for. It's going to be looking for rapid leaks, which would be a pressure loss of three PSI in less than two minutes. And those are the ones where when that pops up, you're going to want to slow it way down and safely get off the side of the road and find out what's going on. It'll also look for those slow leaks, which is going to be a pressure loss of six PSI or more over a two to 10 minute period. So with those, again, I'm going to be slowing it down, but I'll probably try to limp to the next safe place to pull over like a rest area or an exit because that, again, that's a much slower loss. It's also going to be looking at low pressure, which is pressure loss of 15% more from whatever baseline that you set up. So in my case, I set it at 65 PSI. So once it gets down 15% below that, it's going to let me know we have low tire pressures. It will also alert you to high pressure, which is going to be 20% over that baseline. And it's going to be looking at temperatures. It says an internal tire temperature of 167 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius or greater. And it's going to let you know your tires are hot, need to pull over, let those things cool down. So... This is the Tire Minder, the i10. A big thank you to Michael over at Tire Innovations for sending us this to allow us to look at it, install it, test it out. And we think it is an absolutely wonderful product. Like I said, there are a lot of other testimonials here on YouTube. If you don't believe me, go check them out as well. And if you want to save some money on purchasing one of your own tire reminders, I'm going to have a link down below that's going to save you some money. And at the same time, will also support our channel. If you have any questions or comments, if you use a TPMS system, even if it's not this one, tell me about it down below. And if you've never had one, are you considering maybe getting one just to give your family that peace of mind when you're towing down the road? Till next time, everyone. We'll see you on down the road safely. Good night. The video's over. What are you still doing here? Well, 
if you stuck around this long, I might as well throw a couple bonus tips at you. Number one, after I got done installing my tires, I noticed that we were a little low at 58 pounds. So I ended up going around and putting them all up closer to 65 pounds. I just reinstalled the sensors. And when I came back in the trailer, guess what? It relearned on its own. I didn't have to go through that whole learning mode again. I just put the sensors, I take one off at a time, put air in, and then put it back in. So that's good to know. You don't have to do anything other than take it off, put your air in, put it back on, and it's automatically going to find it. Number two is if you're using those locking sensor caps, um, make sure you hold on to this little wrench because this is what you're going to need to get them off when you need to take those monitors off or those sensors off to put air in your tire. So I'm going to be keeping this in a place here in the trailer where it's always going to stay and that way if we ever do have to put air in I'll be able to unlock the sensors to put the air in so hey thanks a lot for sticking around we'll see you next time